Concerns about the global economy and each other's macroeconomic policy may be key issues on the economic agenda of the high-level China-U.S. dialogue scheduled to start on Tuesday. China's economy is slowing down.、Uh, American economy appears to be、uh, getting back on a sound footing, but it's not entirely clear.、Uh, America looks like it's going to actually start to raise interest rates. This will have a, an effect globally. As the world's two largest economies, the U.S. and China are increasingly economically interdependent, with their trade volume hitting 550 billion U.S. dollars last year. Experts say both sides have an enormous stake in each other's economic performance, and also a joint possibility to pursue policies that support the global economy. The U.S. and China should continue to seek consensus and enhance cooperation in various fields in a bid to help maintain world peace and economic prosperity. They have more shared interests than differences, and shouldn't be affected by pessimism or unhelpful cries from interest groups. Talks on a bilateral investment treaty will also be high on the agenda during the SNED meetings. As bid negotiations are considered the most important issue in the two nations' economic relationship, the talks so far, both China and U.S., have gone a lot further than people expected. It is, in fact, the only、uh, document or agreement dealing with international economic issues between the U.S. and China in the foreseeable future. The investment treaty talks began in 2008 as China and the U.S. sought to increase mutual investment, which only accounted for a tiny share of their respective overseas investment. During the two-day SNED meetings, experts say climate change and clean energy will also be discussed, as the two countries haven't done enough to tap the potential, and could gain a lot through collaboration. And this collaboration is essential because this cannot be solved by the pure market. Cannot be solved by business practices. It needs government support, and the reason they need it is that this interaction, this technology improvement, it costs too much. Huang says, as China has a massive production capacity, while the U.S. has sophisticated green technologies, the two countries can collaborate to provide clean energy products at a much lower cost. We have to look for these areas where, in fact, both sides have the similar interests. But they approach it differently. Rather than have a conflict, make it a source of collaboration. We don't do enough of that. International financial cooperation is also expected to be high on the agenda during the SNED meetings. China has shown great interest to add its currency, the RMB, into the SDR basket, as the IMF is scheduled to review the composition of the basket this fall. I think the U.S. again should be supportive. It doesn't mean they need to say right now yes. But they should come up with a sensible list of what changes China might need to make、um, to get U.S. backing. Experts hope the win-win atmosphere on the economic side could be translated into the political and foreign policy side, despite tensions over issues such as the South China Sea and cybersecurity. There are security issues between U.S. and China, and I don't want to pretend they don't exist. It's just. I don't believe they need to spill over into these areas, and in fact, I'd rather see these areas succeed. Some observers say the SNED meetings will provide an important opportunity for both sides to expand economic cooperation, manage their differences, and create a more productive and collaborative environment for Chinese President Xi Jinping's planned state visit to the U.S. in September.